Thank you. Be seated. Bonjour et bienvenue à toutes et à tous. Je suis très heureux que vous ayez pu vous joindre à nous pour souhaiter officiellement une chaleureuse bienvenue à notre distingué nouveau collègue, M. le juge Mahmoud Jamal. We are honored today to have with us l'honorable David Lamedy, ministre de la Justice et procureur général du Canada, the honorable David Downey, attorney general of Ontario, Mr. Stephen Rothstein, president of the Canadian Bar Association, Ms. Teresa Donnelly, treasurer of the Law Society of Ontario, Mr. Stephen Raby, president of the Federation of Law Societies of Canada, and the Honorable George Stratty, Chief Justice of Ontario. Nous souhaitons également la bienvenue aux nombreux juges en chef et autres distingués membres de la magistrature et du public de partout au pays qui se joignent eux aussi à nous à distance grâce à notre web diffusion. The most special welcome must be addressed, of course, to Justice Jamal's family and dear friends, especially Justice Jamal's spouse, Galita, and their sons, Darius and Justin. Welcome to the big Supreme Court of Canada family. Monsieur le Registraire, par intérim, je vous inviterai maintenant à lire la commission sous le grand sceau du Canada, dans les deux langues officielles, attestant de la nomination de l'honorable juge Mahmoud Jamal à titre de juge puné de la Cour suprême du Canada. Canada, Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, Canada, and her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to the Honorable Mahmoud Jamal, a Justice of Appeal of the Court of Appeal for Ontario, greeting. Know you that reposing special trust and confidence in your loyalty, integrity, and ability, we, by and with the advice of our Privy Council for Canada, do hereby constitute and appoint you, Mahmoud Jamal, a puny judge of the Supreme Court of Canada. To have, hold, exercise and enjoy the office of a puny judge of the Supreme Court of Canada unto you, Mahmoud Jamal, with all the powers, rights, authority, privileges, profits, emoluments, and advantages in, onto that office of right and by law appertaining during your good behavior effective the first day of July in the year of our Lord, 2021. In testimony whereof, we have caused these, our letters, to be made patent, and the great seal of Canada to be hereunto affixed. Witness, our right, trusty, and well-beloved Mary May Simon, Chancellor and Principal Companion of our Order of Canada, Chancellor and Commander of our Order of Military Merit, Chancellor and Commander of our Order of Merit of the Police Forces, Governor General and Commander in Chief of Canada. At our Government House in our City of Ottawa, this first day of September in the year of our Lord, 2021, and in the 70th year of our reign. By command, Registrar General of Canada and Attorney General of Canada. Canada, Elizabeth II, par la grâce de Dieu, Reine du Royaume-Uni, du Canada et de ses autres royaumes et territoires, Chef du Commonwealth, Défenseur de la foi, à l'Honorable Mahmoud Jamal, juge d'appel de la Cour d'appel de l'Ontario, salut. En raison de notre confiance particulière en votre loyauté, en votre intégrité et en vos capacités, nous, sur et avec l'avis de notre Conseil privé pour le Canada, vous constituons et nommons, vous, Mahmoud Jamal, juge de la Cour suprême du Canada. À titre de juge de la Cour suprême du Canada, vous, Mahmoud Jamal, jouirez désormais à titre inamovible de tous les pouvoirs, droits, prérogatives, bénéfices, émoluments et avantages attachés de droit et par la loi à cette charge, à compter de ce premier jour de juillet de l'an de grâce 2021. En foi de quoi, nous avons fait délivrer nos présentes lettres patentes et avons fait apposer le grand sceau du Canada. Témoin, notre très fidèle et bien-aimée Mary May Simon, 
chancelière et compagnon principal de notre Ordre du Canada, chancelière et commandeur de notre Ordre du mérite militaire, chancelière et commandeur de notre Ordre du mérite des corps policiers, gouverneur général et commandante en chef du Canada. À notre hôtel du gouvernement, en notre ville d'Ottawa, ce premier jour de septembre de l'an de grâce 2021, 70e de notre règne, par ordre, Registraire général du Canada et procureur général du Canada. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite Justice Jamal to join the acting registrar and sign the uh, ceremonial roll book. Félicitations. Alors, Monsieur le juge Amal, je vous invite maintenant à prendre place, à prendre votre place sur le banc de la cour. Aujourd'hui est une très belle journée, puisque pour la troisième fois, j'ai le plaisir de présider une cérémonie d'accueil en l'honneur d'un nouvel ami et collègue. Soyez assurés, M. le juge Amal, que personne ne souhaitait un événement se déroulant sous le signe de la distanciation sociale et auquel bon nombre de vos parents et amis assistent à distance. Toutefois, les diverses mesures sanitaires nous permettent effectivement de réduire la, pro la propagation du virus de la COVID-19 et de ses variants. Aujourd'hui, mon désir le plus cher est que cette cérémonie de bienvenue, une tradition de longue date de notre cours, traduise bien toute la chaleur de notre accueil à votre égard. In 2019, I read a great piece in Canadian Lawyer Magazine by veteran criminal defense lawyer Bill Trudell, who had recently attended a welcome and swearing-in ceremony at Ontario Superior Court of Justice. It was called an ode to judicial joy. In his description of the ceremony, he wrote, and I quote, it is a singularly momentous time when judges take on their sash, the sash, mount the days, and speak to those assembled personally from the heart about their journey to their new station in life and their roles going forward. Trudell added that it takes great courage to properly embrace the occasion and share what it means to realize your silent dreams, but face the reality of what is ahead. End of quote. I agree wholeheartedly with that sentiment. Comme je l'ai mentionné lors de la sermentation en privé du juge Jamal, le jour de la fête du Canada, la cour de l'accueil effectivement de nouveau en effet, en 1994 et 1995, il a travaillé comme auxiliaire juridique auprès du juge Charles Gontier, une expérience qui a suscité son intérêt à l'égard des travaux de la Cour suprême du Canada. Au cours des 26 années qui ont suivi, notre nouveau collègue est devenu un habitué de cette, en de cette enceinte. Il a agi à 35 reprises comme procureur d'une partie ou d'un intervenant. Les affaires auxquelles il a participé traitaient de tout, allant du droit criminel et de la responsabilité civile, en passant par la Charte des droits et libertés, ainsi que le droit civil québécois. Le juge Amal a également été conseiller auprès de l'Institut de plaidoirie, 
aidant ainsi d'autres avocats à se préparer en vue de leurs audiences à la Cour suprême. Monsieur le juge Jamal, vous avez apporté de précieuses contributions à notre Cour pendant des décennies. Et maintenant, après votre brillante carrière de plaideur et plus récemment de juge à la Cour d'appel, je suis heureux de vous souhaiter un chaleureux retour à la Cour suprême, mais cette fois comme membre à part entière. Since his arrival, Justice Jamal has impressed upon us all his keen sense of collegiality. Justice Moldaver told me recently, and I quote, Mahmoud is a natural. He has no agenda. His mission in every case is to do what is right and just for the parties, as well as for Canadians and the country as a whole. And he does so with a sense of modesty, humility, and a deep understanding of the human condition, end of quote. I would add that Justice Jamal has also established himself as an engaging ambassador for the court, especially when it comes to promoting the principle of access to justice. In recent speeches to law students at the universities of Ottawa and British Columbia, He told them it was not too early for pro bono work. Justice Jamal said, and I quote, if you start doing pro bono early in law school and make it part of who you are, you'll help others. And in the process, you will become a better student and a better lawyer. You will enhance your reputation with the judiciary and in the broader community. And you will also experience the deep satisfaction of giving back. Indeed, Justice Jamal has worked on cases that have advanced civil liberties, the equality rights of indigenous peoples, access to justice, and the rights of children. Cet engagement de toute une vie envers le travail bénévole a été souligné dans le témoignage qu'a livré cet été le procureur général du Canada, Maître David Lametti, devant le comité permanent de la justice et des droits de la personne. Le ministre a dit, et je cite, « Son histoire n'est pas seulement une histoire d'excellence dans la profession juridique, dans l'érudition et dans le service bénévole à la communauté, mais aussi une histoire, une histoire d'exploration du drôle, du rôle que jouent les différences dans notre société. » Fin de la citation. Justice Jamal graduated from Edmonton's Ross Shepherd Composite High School before going abroad to study at the London School of Economics and Political Science. He returned to the University of Toronto's Trinity College, where he obtained his Bachelor of Arts in Economics. His next step was Montreal, where Justice Jamal received his Bachelor of Laws and Bachelor of Civil Law degrees. As a Fulbright Scholar, our friend attended Yale and received a Master of Laws. He was admitted to the Ontario Bar in 1995. À cette époque, le juge Jamal avait déjà travaillé cinq étés comme avocat plaideur au sein de l'un des plus grands cabinets d'avocats du pays. Il avait aussi exercé les fonctions d'auxiliaire juridique auprès du juge Melvin Rothman de la Cour d'appel du Québec et du juge Charles Gontier de la Cour suprême. Au cours des 26 dernières années, le juge Jamal a vécu et travaillé dans trois provinces où il a exercé à l'échelle nationale et acquis une expertise très variée. Il a plaidé devant des tribunaux administratifs et des cours de justice dans sept provinces. Durant cette période, il a donné des conférences, écrit des articles, coécrit un ouvrage, en plus d'apporter de précieuses contributions à des publications de renom, telles que la Revue de droit de McGill, le Osgoodall Law Journal, et la Revue nationale de droit constitutionnel. Il a aussi continué avec diligence à parfaire sa formation en tant qu'avocat et de juge. Throughout his career, Justice Jamal was repeatedly named a leading lawyer in cross-border, administrative, class action, corporate, commercial, and public law. Organizations recognized Justice Jamal for his pro bono litigation and volunteerism. 
exactly how our new colleague also managed to coach soccer for six years is a mystery to me. But it is a testament to a man who knows how to achieve that elusive work-life balance. Outside his regular legal practice, Justice Jamal dedicated time and expertise to protecting the rights of immigrants, religious minorities, and racialized Canadians. He served on the, on the Ontario Anti-Racism Consultation Group and mentored new immigrants seeking employment. I would also like to highlight how Justice Jamal ensured that lawyers with less courtroom experience, especially women and racialized people, had opportunities to appear before the Supreme Court. Justice Jamal was appointed to the Ontario Court of Appeal in 2019. There, Ontario Chief Justice George Strati told me, and I quote, Mahmoud brought to our court a broad and deep intellect, an inquisitive mind, a collegial approach, a serene disposition, and as far as I, I could be discerned, no ego. When he joined us, it was a case of just add water. Chief Justice Strati added, Mahmoud is truly representative of Canada as a whole. His complete familiarity with both the civil law and the common law, his experience in appellate courts, not only in Quebec and Ontario, but across the country, his fluency in both French and English, and of course, his background and experiences as a new Canadian. Il va de soi que ses dernières expériences professionnelles ont été grandement influencées par le défi de rendre justice en temps utile au plus fort d'une pandémie mondiale. À la Cour d'appel, le juge Amal a joué un rôle de chef de file en siégeant au comité de ce tribunal sur l'accès à distance, ainsi qu'à son comité sur la technologie liée à la COVID-19. It is remarkable the difference, one, the difference one person can make, in this case, Justice Jamal, in such a short time. À mon nom et au nom de mes collègues, je vous félicite, Monsieur Juge Jamal. Nous sommes vraiment ravis que vous soyez maintenant notre neuvième juge à la Cour. Nous nous réjouissons à la perspective de profiter de votre contribution et de votre amitié. Let me also extend my best wishes to your dearest friends and family, especially Golita, Darius, and Justin. By now, they have likely seen that the work of the court is very demanding. I want to express a special thank you to them for all of their support in the weeks and years ahead. Again, on behalf of us all, welcome you back to the Supreme Court of Canada. Thank you. J'inviterai maintenant le ministre de la Justice et procureur général du Canada, Monsieur David Lemetti, à nous dire quelques mots. Monsieur le juge en chef, Justice Jamal, Justices of the Supreme Court, Jamal family, and all the distinguished guests here in the chambers with us, as well as those uh, linked to us by video conference. I would like to begin my remarks uh, by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg. C'est pour moi un privilège de me joindre à vous afin d'accueillir officiellement l'honorable juge Mahmoud Jamal à la Cour suprême du Canada. Il s'agit d'un grand moment tant pour le juge Jamal, sa famille et ses proches que pour la Cour suprême. Comme vous le savez, notre système de justice, tout comme la société en général, traverse une incroyable période de transformation. La pandémie de la COVID-19 a entraîné énormes changements de notre façon de travailler, des innovations dans les salles d'audience et la possibilité de refa refaçonner les institutions publiques canadiennes. Parmi ces institutions, la Cour suprême est l'une des plus renommées 
et des plus respectés. Elle doit défendre les idiots de notre système de justice en faisant preuve d'équité et de compassion et en étant le reflet de la population diversifiée qu'elle sert. This most likely explains why Justice Jamal's appointment to our highest court was met with a great deal of excitement right across the country, and for good reason. He has made history as the first person of color and the first person of the Baha'i faith to be appointed to the Supreme Court. Perfectly bilingual, we know him as a thoughtful and insightful judge who brings a wealth of experience to this role, as well as a deep commitment to the rule of law. From my own experience in Montreal, I remember colleagues and, and former students at McGill telling me of this brilliant student who somehow studied after I had left but before I came back as a professor. And, and Justice Jamal fulfilled that, uh, those high expectations that were, that were given to me by others. Mr. Justice Jamal, throughout your career, you have sought fairness for people from all walks of life taking cases that advance the rights of indigenous peoples, civil liberties, access to justice, and the rights of children. This drive to ensure that all people are treated fairly is rooted in your personal lived experiences. You've been candid about the challenges you have faced in your life as an immigrant, being the target of discrimination for your skin color or your religious beliefs. And we admire you for that openness. These experiences have clearly helped shape your career as a scholar, as a lawyer, and now as a judge. And they will serve you as you take your spot on the bench of our highest court. I know that the entire legal community welcomes your voice and your insight as we work together to build a justice system that is diverse, compassionate, and fair for all people. Lors de votre comparution devant les parlementaires, vous avez affirmé que tous les Canadiens ont le droit de comprendre ce que leur plus haut tribunal, ce qu'ils décident et pourquoi ils le décident. Cet engagement envers l'accès à la justice et l'équité pour tous s'est d'ailleurs reflété dans tous les aspects de votre travail. Reconnu pour votre grande humilité, vous êtes également un exemple de compassion. Dès le début de votre carrière, vous, avez, vous accordiez déjà une grande place au service pro bono. Vous avez mis votre expertise juridique exceptionnelle au service des personnes dont, dans le besoin, dans de multiples domaines de droit, dans de nombreuses provinces et devant les tribunaux de toutes les instances. En outre, comme vous êtes diplômé, tant en common law qu'en droit civil, vous avez une compréhension approfondie des traditions de bilinguisme et de bijuridisme qui caractérise le Canada et la Cour suprême d'un point de vue juridique. I expect you will continue to lead by example with the same integrity and wisdom that you have shown in courtrooms and classrooms throughout your career. The citizens we all serve need to trust in their institutions and feel represented and respected, and you will contribute greatly to that. Your unique voice will add richness to this court with a more informed perspective about the issues facing people of color, religious minorities, immigrants, and their families. In this role, you will help shape our justice system for the future, putting people at the center of our responses and aiming to leave no one behind. Mr. Justice Jamal, once again, I would like to congratulate you on your appointment and offer my very best wishes as you take up the duties of this distinguished office. Thank you. Merci. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. I would now invite uh, Mr. Doug Downey, Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Ontario to address the court. Thank you, Chief Justice and Justice Jamal, other members of the court, Honorable David Lametti, Chief Justice Strathy, friends, colleagues, and of course, the family of Justice Jamal, who must be so proud. Thank you for your welcome and the chance to provide congratulations and warmest wishes to Justice Jamal on behalf of all Ontarians. The renewal and evolution of our country's highest court is important to every Canadian and each of the provinces we call home. It is cause for celebration. Canada has never stood still. And as Canadians, we are yet to encounter an era bereft of crisis or conflict. 
So while Justice Jamal's appointment came as our country and its provinces have been gripped with tremendous challenges and profound change, he begins his service on the court as his predecessors and colleagues have done, seized with urgent, urgent questions of the day that touch the lives of all Canadians. And as my fellow speakers today have illustrated, and as he himself has demonstrated in his honourable service as a Justice of the Court of Appeal, Justice Jamal possesses the right tools needed to serve the court in this time of transformation, and I think it is fair to say uncertainty. It is heartening to know we will continue to benefit collectively from his commitment to serving fellow Canadians and the vast experience, exemplary insights, compassion, and curiosity that he brings to the law and how it is applied from coast to coast to coast. I want to highlight in particular the breadth and diversity of Justice Jamal's experience. While he has served on Ontario's highest court, it is encouraging to know that his broad and well-rounded experience throughout the country will continue to benefit all Canadians. It is wonderful to see such rich experience, including appearances before courts, as has been mentioned, in seven provinces, as well as federal court, the Federal Court of Appeal, the Tax Court of Canada, and so many federal and provincial administrative tribunals. And when we, can, when we consider Justice Jamal's service through pro bono work, community involvement, mentorship, education, and as a leader at the forefront of so many legal entities and organizations, there is no doubt he's a tremendous asset to the greatest thinkers in our country. That is no exaggeration, and I know Justice Jamal will only add to the incredible breakthroughs and foresight that has been accomplished here within these walls and in this room. Of course, these are staggering expectations, but I heard a rumor that Justice Jamal is pretty smart. <laughs> and I heard another rumor, it may be hearsay, but that he's an all-around good guy. So when it comes to this court, I think we as Canadians are right to expect the best. And we haven't been let down. I truly believe that. Just this week, last Sunday, I had someone ask me what the remedy is if the Supreme Court of Canada gets it wrong. After informing her that it hadn't happened yet, I reminded her of the significance of making the Supreme Court of Canada the final stop through the change in 1949. The change to patriot the final appeal to put, pre put pressure on Canada to make sure that the Supreme Court understood the country and the power of reflecting our diversity from geography to race to origin, experience, language, gender, and so many other factors. And while the court is delivered, it is crucial that we make it our business to keep our expectations high. I believe in the strength of our federation, just as its foundations were thoughtfully and ambitiously constructed, we have emerged as a country that can incubate a great array of ideas that change lives and change the world. Ideas that can be shared, expanded, and adapted by others. This essential element of the Canadian experience, which is fostered by the leadership of our provinces, is what makes Canada so wonderful and so well Canadian. Justice Jamal embodies so many of those attributes. And in these ways, it is clear to me that the centralization of the Supreme Court as a final appeal is at its best when it's constituted from this diversity. From these perspectives and other, any other, Justice Jamal is a tremendous choice and will be an important voice on this court. I'm truly thrilled to be here to bear witness to this important moment for Justice Jamal and for Canada. And being closely acquainted with the privilege and complexities of selecting judiciary, I would also like to congratulate the Honourable David Lametti on his government's appointment of Justice Jamal, an excellent choice indeed. I would also like to congratulate you in your continuation as Minister of Justice, Attorney General of Canada. And with that, I thank you for this opportunity to be with you and to share the celebration of Justice Jamal's ongoing contributions to our country, the law, and to their continuing renewal. Thank you. Merci. Megwitch. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. Maintenant, je cède la parole à M. Stephen Rothstein, président de l'Association du Barreau canadien. Monsieur le Judge de Chef de Canada, Members de la Cour, Monsieur le Minister de la Justice, Monsieur le Procureur General d'Ontario, colleagues and guests, especially to Justice Jamal's family here today, c'est un privilège de vous saluer au nombre de 36 000 d'associations de bureau canadien. Justice Jamal, in your response to the questionnaire that you completed, you addressed the importance of pro bono work. You said you were fortunate to have represented, among others, the Canadian Bar Association in several appeals to the Supreme Court of Canada in cases dealing with the protection of solicitor-client privilege, 
litigation privilege, and other issues affecting the legal profession. I hate to be the one pointing out the mistakes in your reasoning and with the utmost respect, but I humbly suggest that you have it backwards. We were the fortunate ones. Pro bono work, you write, is work that allows lawyers to transcend the daily concerns and join something larger than themselves. Those are very powerful words. And an inspiration for those of us in the profession who believe it is our duty to give back to society. Fighting for fundamental rights is a way that transcends our daily concerns. If that doesn't motivate you to get out, out the door in the morning, I really don't know what will. Thank you, Justice Jamal, for encouraging each one of us to be better today than we were yesterday. Nous sommes aujourd'hui entourés de gens remarquables, des experts de droit, évidemment, mais de gens de savoir exceptionnel d'intégrité sans pareil. Integrity is a word that comes naturally to Justice Jamal. Everyone who's had the privilege of working closely with him uses it, particularly those who've benefited from his mentorship and guidance over the years. I turned to some of the lawyers who he worked with on CBA cases for their views. Derek Lashinsky, who is now senior counsel with the Competition Bureau, said that for him, what distinguishes Justice Jamal from many lawyers that he's worked with is a strong ethical current running through everything he did. Alexandra Fallon, partner at Osler's, echoed the same sentiment and emphasized Justice Jamal's work ethic. According to Fallon, Justice Jamal demanded as much of himself as he did members of his team, and it always showed. Raphael Egan, now at Denton's, added that Justice Jamal never delegated the less interesting work to his juniors. They worked together as equals. Egan praised his former mentor for his humility, his kindness, and his willing to share credit with his team. Justice Jamal was primarily a corporate, primarily, uh, practiced primarily in corporate litigation, and he excelled there. But he didn't limit himself to that particular area of law. Looking at pro bono cases he took, you can tell how much he cares about advancing equity rights for everyone, in particular Indigenous peoples and members of other equity-seeking groups. Justice Jamal's work on privilege, including solicitor client privilege, has also served to promote access to justice. Members of the legal profession, including the CBA members, understand the significance of this work through their own, for their own professional lives and the way it benefits Canadian society as a whole. According to the lawyers who've worked with him, Justice Jamal brings remarkable thought and care to his preparation of cases. Lashinsky took, uh, said they took a deep look into the law when they worked together and they compared compelling submissions, including some that were cited by this court. I could stand here and talk for hours about Justice Jamal's collegiality and good fellowship as a mentor and a litigator, or in his mark on the legal system as a justice in the, on the Court of Appeal for Ontario. If the past is any indication of the future, his appointment to the Supreme Court will leave a very positive mark on our country. The lawyers who work with him all say he was exceptional in every way. The Canadian Bar Association has long advocated for a diverse judiciary that reflects Canadian society. The appointment of Justice Jamal, in the words of my immediate predecessor, Bradley Regeer, is a significant stride forward. The CBA believes in the importance of a functional bilingual Supreme Court, and Justice Jamal fits the bill. He's an elegant writer, who do, whose delivery is compelling and thoughtful. He has a knack for turning an arcane legal concept into a clear, concise examination of ideas. I wonder if it, this comes from working as a clerk in an Edmonton bookstore a long time ago. Or maybe the love of words and language is what guided him to that job, then to law school, private practice, and then the judiciary. The Canadian Bar Association is proud of the role it plays in the process that informs the selection of judges to sit on the country's highest court. We are confident in the abilities of that process to find supremely qualified candidates, candidates who bring to the bench the necessary qualities to execute the critically important and weighty responsibilities of a Supreme Court judge. And we're always happy to celebrate the appointment of someone 
who's contributed to the work of the CBA as you have, Justice Jamal. Au nom de l'Association de Bureau Canadien, je tiens à vous féliciter, Monsieur Judge Jamal, et vous offrirez meilleur vue de récite. Notre système, c'est un bon main. Our heartfelt congratulations, Justice Jamal. Thank you very much, Mr. Rustin. We would now like to ask the uh, Treasurer of the Law Society of Ontario, Ms. Teresa Donnelly, to say a few words. C'est un honneur pour moi de m'adresser à vous cette en occasion historique. Le pouvoir de juger est l'honneur ultime qui peut être comparé à une personne. With that honor comes great responsibility. The care and the preservation of the rule of law, a foundation of our democratic society. To you has been entrusted this great honor and corresponding duty. Thank you for accepting this solemn responsibility. On behalf of your former colleagues at the Law Society of Ontario, its 57,000 lawyers and 9,500 paralegals, Congratulations. Your qualifications are, in a word, spectacular. To this court, you bring wisdom, integrity, respect, empathy, civility, a dedication to public service, and an unwavering commitment to equality. You have a rigorous intellect, a command of the law, and a resolute understanding that even the most complex legal issues must be made clear and comprehensible in reasons for judgment. You also bring a unique perspective based on your own lived experiences. Like many Canadians, your family and your wife's family came to Canada as immigrants with little in the way of earthly goods, an experience that gives you insight and understanding to some of the struggles newcomers to Canada experience, particularly as visible or religious minorities. I've heard you say that this is not about you. With respect, it is. You are a highly qualified and respected jurist. But additionally, your appointment transcends the individual. This is truly a momentous occasion for legal professionals and the public. For legal professionals, your appointment encourages diversity within the bar, which promotes the public interest. You stand as a beacon of hope and possibility for all those who want to be or who are lawyers. Your appointment demonstrates clearly that public institutions in Canada are open to all members of society, including historically underrepresented groups such as Indigenous peoples, people of colour, women, individuals who identify as LGBTQ2S+, people with disabilities, and others. For the public, although access to justice is a fundamental principle of our justice system, every day many people are faced with barriers to getting the help they need. Vulnerable and marginalized populations face additional barriers to access to justice for many reasons often springing from their gender, race, abilities, or income. For an increasing number of Canadians, not only is the justice system beyond their reach and resources, but the courts do not reflect the increasingly diverse population. As our society needs to, and its needs change, the judiciary at all levels of court must be a reflection of society and composed of individuals of varied backgrounds and experiences. As the first Supreme Court Justice of Colour, 
your appointment strengthens public confidence in, respect for, and trust in the judiciary. Canada is a bilingual, multiracial, and multicultural country. Judges are shaped by, by and gain insights from their different life experiences and the perspectives of the communities from which they come. Your appointment is a significant step toward making the court's highest court, the country's highest court, reflective of the diverse population it serves. The court and the people of Canada will benefit from your, val your, your valuable knowledge, insight, and perspectives. Encore une fois, félicitations, un séjour important. Please accept my thanks on behalf of the legal professionals of Ontario uh, and across the country for accepting this appointment. Today is an important, historic day for Canada's justice system and for all Canadians. Thank you. Merci, Megwich. Thank you, Ms. Donnelly. I would now like to invite the President of the Federation of Law Societies of Canada, Mr. Stephen Raby. Thank you, Chief Justice, <clears throat> Monsieur le Juge, Honorable Justices, members of the legal profession, and distinguished guests, and especially the family of Justice Jamel. It gives me great pleasure, Justice Jamel, to express my heartfelt congratulations to you and to your family as you take up your new role and duties as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada, an appointment befitting your outstanding career and exceptional talents. I do so on behalf of the Federation of Law Societies of Canada, the national coordinating body of Canada's 14 law societies that regulate our country's legal profession in the public interest. Nous célébrons d'aujourd'hui le remarquable parcours professionnel de Juge Maham Jamel, qui est une source d'inspiration pour nous tous. As noted by others, we celebrate this as a landmark moment in this country's history. The appointment of Justice Jamel to this court underscores the principle that Canadians, or Canada's diversity should be reflected in all our country's public institutions. Indeed, his life reflects that of many Canadians who bravely chose, or whose parents bravely chose, to make a new life for themselves far from their countries of origin. One observes from his personal and professional journey a rich tapestry of experiences that capture many nuances of Canada's rich legal traditions and histories. I would also note, as a native Albertan, that it can never hurt to spend a portion of one's formative years in Alberta. As a student in economics and law, Justice Jamel studied here and abroad. <clears throat> Later, as one of the country's most sought after litigants, litigators, he argued his case throughout much of the country. Early on in his career, he embraced the bi-juridical nature of Canada's justice system. Il a perfectionné son français et ses émissés dans la tradition juridique civiliste du Québec dès les débuts de sa carrière en droit. He also sought out opportunities to work with Indigenous groups. This helped him gain valuable insight into the importance of Indigenous legal traditions in Canada's constitutional framework. To say that he knows this country well is an understatement. In truth, he knows this country better than most, having found success as a lawyer in high demand. Whoever said law is a sedentary profession has clearly never worked at the side of Justice Jamel who forged for himself a truly national litigation practice before his appointment to the Ontario Court of Appeal. And if you will allow me one indulgence, I'd like to say that the Federation de derives some pride from your achievements. You are, after all, in a small way, the beneficiary of the National Mob Mobility Agreement that the Federation spearheaded, that allows the seamless recognition of legal credentials and allows lawyers to practice across provincial and territorial borders regardless of their law society of call. Justice Jamal's commitment to the better administration of Canada's justice system is evidence in the breadth and depth of his pro bono work for a number of organizations focused on defending rights, protecting the rule of law, and advancing the cause for improved access to justice. 
For that, we are grateful to him. Given his devotion to practice, it is truly remarkable how much time he has dedicated to volunteering in various programs. I suspect much of his motivation came from a deeply held desire to pass along his knowledge. His younger colleagues in the profession speak highly of Justice Jamal as a brilliant and generous teacher, always patient, always understanding, always invested in their success. You have been a great support to those junior practitioners, helping them learn their craft by way of mentoring. You've taught them how to articulate a position in the most effective way, appealing to the judge's sense of fairness and not by taking the throwing the spaghetti at the wall approach to pleading as one former colleague delicately put it. Indeed, one of the challenges of regulators of the legal profession in Canada is to attempt to ensure that the level of support that you have provided to junior practitioners continues as the profession grows in size and becomes increasingly reliant on technology and virtual communication. I expect that this court will benefit greatly from this skill, as well as from his vast knowledge and experience as a lawyer, educator, and judge. Justice Jamal has, over his career, argued or presided over matters ranging from commercial law and taxation to administrative and constitutional law. And he has argued more than a few of his cases before this very court. Not only is he exceptionally well-rounded as a legal scholar, but Justice Jamal's other defining feature is his calm and balanced temperament. He never gets too worked up about things, says one of his former partners. In fact, that same partner tells the story of the time that she boarded a plane with Justice Jamal, then a litigator, to the East Coast for a hearing. In her telling, it was the worst flight she had ever been on in her entire life. Even the members of the cabin crew were in tears, apparently. While everyone was clutching their armrests for dear life, Justice Jamal sat quietly reading his brief. Then, at one particular turbulent moment, he turned to his terrified colleague and quipped, matter-of-factly, well, I'm sure glad my life insurance is paid up. I suppose this anecdote speaks to the importance Justice Jamal places on preparation. Because he was always the most prepared person in the room, says another former colleague, and he will expect the same of those who come before him, and rightly so. La Cour suprême du Canada a toujours et appelé à se pencher sur les grandes questions de notre époque. This court has always been called upon to decide upon the defining issues of our era. But we can only speculate about the matters that will come before you. As Justice Jamal has said himself, judges wait for cases to come before the courts and then do their duty to adjudicate according to law, one case at a time. Even so, I'd wager that Justice Jamal's time as a member of this court comes at a critical moment during which our country will face extraordinary new challenges arising from its internal differences, be they cultural, religious, geographic, or economic. How this court will help the countries accommodate those differences will be the focus of his life's work from this day forward. I cannot think of a better person to join this supremely talented bench to take up that challenge. Il ne fait pas doute que la vaste expérience de Juge Jamal, qui a tant vu et tant vécu le droit dans ce pays, jouera un rôle clé sur cette cour. Justice Jamal, on behalf of the Federation of Law Societies of Canada, I wish you every success in this new phase of your extraordinary career. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Riby. It is now time to hear from our new colleague. Mahmoud, the floor is yours. I would like to thank uh, Chief Justice Wagner, Minister Lametti, Minister Downey, Ms. Rothstein, Mr. Rothstein, Ms. Donnelly, and Mr. Raby for their very kind remarks. Je tiens également à remercier le Premier Ministre Trudeau pour la confiance qu'il me témoigne par cette nomination, ainsi que le comité consultatif indépendant sur la nomination des juges à la Cour suprême du Canada, présidé par la, par la très honorable Kim Campbell, pour le rôle important que le comité a joué dans le processus de nomination. En tant que 80, le 90e Canadien 
à détenir cette charge en 146 ans. Je suis très honoré que l'on m'accorde cette possibilité unique de servir la population canadienne. My, my predecessor, the Honorable Rosalie Silberman Abella, is a judicial icon who served on the Supreme Court with extraordinary distinction for 17 years. Her pioneering career involved a multitude of judicial firsts spanning half a century. The first pregnant judge in Canadian history, the first refugee appointed to the bench in Canada, and the first female Jewish judge on the Supreme Court. Justice Abella has broken down barrier after barrier for the many who have followed in her footsteps. She's also shifted intellectual paradigms, deepening our understanding of the law's concrete impact on people's lives, particularly for those who are vulnerable or disadvantaged. A recent conference in her honor reviewed her many contributions to constitutional and human rights law, administrative law, and family law, among other areas, and eloquently described how she had threaded equality throughout the law. Rosie and her beloved husband, Irving, have extended their considerable personal warmth to my wife, Galetta, and me, giving us their unconditional support and the benefit of their wise counsel. After I was appointed, Rosie told me that I would soon learn what it is to have a Jewish mother. She was right. As someone with an Indian Muslim mother and an Iranian Baha'i mother-in-law, I am absolutely delighted to have Rosie among my circle of multicultural maternal figures. I'm also honored to have been appointed to this court on July the 1st, Canada's and Rosie's birthday. La cérémonie d'accueil des nouveaux juges de la Cour suprême est l'occasion pour la personne qui vient d'être nommée juge de se présenter brièvement aux Canadiens et Canadiens et de dire quelques mots sur la contribution qu'elle espère apporter dans ce rôle. Cela m'a amené à réfléchir aux différentes forces qui ont, qui ont joué dans ma vie et qui font en sorte que nous sommes rassemblés ici aujourd'hui. The 19th century Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard famously wrote that life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. A similar sentiment was expressed by the late Steve Jobs in his Stanford commencement address when he said that you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. When I tried to connect the dots in my own life, to bring meaning to the seeming random particularity over 54 years, the only unifying principle that seems to stitch it all together is an abiding belief in pluralism, a belief in the inherent value of the diversity of nationalities, ethnicities, religions, languages, legal systems, and perspectives that exemplify what it means to be Canadian. In my case, that belief has arisen to paraphrase Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., not from logic, but from experience. My family's experience is shared by so many new Canadians, including members of this court, who have moved from country to country in search of a better life. My family were originally Ismaili Muslims from Gujarat in British India who had migrated to East Africa during the construction of the Kenya-Uganda Railway in the late 19th century. Three generations of us were born in Kenya, including me, I was born in Nairobi in 1967, and I remained a very proud Kenyan citizen until I was 17. In 1969, my parents immigrated to the UK in the hope for a better future for their children. I grew up in a small village an hour north of London, where, I used to joke, we were the first foreigners since the Norman invaders in 1066, and were often greeted with as much warmth. I can't attest to the historical accuracy of this, but it certainly describes how we sometimes felt. Like many, many immigrants, growing up, I received a pluralistic cultural and religious upbringing with all its associated identity challenges. I was raised at school as a Christian, reciting the Lord's Prayer and absorbing the values of the Church of England, and at home as a Muslim, learning Arabic prayers from the Quran and living as part of England's Ismaili community. On November 1981, my family a sorti sur l'occasion d'immigrer au Canada. Nous nous sommes établis à Edmonton, en Alberta, où nous avions déjà de la famille. Dès notre premier jour au Canada, nous avons senti 
que nous étions les bienvenus à Edmonton comme jamais ailleurs auparavant. Je me suis inscrit à, à la Ross Shepherd Composite High School dans le nord-ouest d'Edmonton, une école dont l'ancien élève le plus célèbre, Wayne Gretzky, avait peu de temps auparavant foulé brièvement les corridors, mais qui s'affairait alors à faire d'Edmonton la vie des champions. Par contraste, ma propre passage à Rochette m'a appris que mon avenir ne résiderait pas dans le hockey professionnel. I had many excellent teachers at Shep. If I connect the dots, I realize that they laid the foundation for everything else that followed. When I graduated high school in 1984, I would not have believed that my, French, my next French test, a decade later, would be as a Supreme Court clerk, or that the next one after that, almost 30 years later, would be in the process of being appointed as a Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada. I therefore always urge young people, including my two sons, to learn and study French, because it broadens and deepens your understanding of Canada and Canadians, and you never know what doors it might open for you in life. Au cours de la décennie qui a suivi la, la, suivi la fin de mes études secondaires, j'ai fréquenté quatre universités dans trois pays différents. J'ai d'abord étudié l'économie à la London School of Economics et au Trinity College de l'Université de Toronto, avant de finalement découvrir ma vocation, le droit, d'abord à l'Université McGill et puis à Yale Law School. Au cours de mes études, j'ai eu la chance de rencontrer des gens qui sont devenus des, am des amis de longue date, notamment Kerry Sturton à Trinity et les juges David Rose et Matthew Taylor à McGill. My parents, Amir and Nergis, who had not had the opportunity to attend university themselves, always encouraged me throughout this process, as did my siblings, Golnar, Salmar, and Kabir, all of whom have had fulfilling careers and have been blessed with loving families. My parents told me to get an education because an education is something that nobody can ever take away from you. While my parents know how grateful I am to them, I am pleased to express publicly my love and gratitude for their many sacrifices. I also want to express my love and gratitude to my remarkable wife, Galetta. I was introduced to Galetta by my aunt and uncle, Asmina and Vernon Samaru, my two guardian angels, who instinctively knew that I needed more than, more than a little help in that direction. In Farsi, Galetta means the flower of Tehran, the city of her birth. In 1979, during the Iranian Revolution, Galetta's mother, Rezvan, who was then recently widowed, fled Iran with her five young children to escape the persecution of the country's Baha'i religious minority. After they spent a few years in the Philippines, Canada welcomed them as refugees. They settled first in Innisfail, Alberta, then in Red Deer, and finally in Calgary. For the 22 years that we've been married, Galetta has made my legal career possible. More importantly, she has done everything in her power to ensure that our sons, Darius and Justin, grow up into the impressive young men that they have become. She has deepened my understanding of the Baha'i faith and its message of the spiritual unity of humankind, leading me to embrace the faith myself. It is simply a gift to pass through life with her. Darius and Justin have brought great joy and meaning to our lives. Their accomplishments fill us with pride while their sense of humor and engaging personalities make them enormously enjoyable companions. Whenever I start to take myself too seriously, Darius and Justin can always be counted on to bring me down to earth. Galetta's mother, Rez Rezvan, has also been central to my life. She is a woman with a deep faith and an indomitable spirit, someone who warms the heart of everyone she meets. Without the unwavering support of all my family, I simply would not be before you today. Je vais maintenant vous parler de ma carrière en droit qui a débuté à la faculté de droit de l'Université McGill en 1989. J'ai été très chanceux d'avoir pu, pu étudier, étudier le droit à McGill. Rétrospectivement, tout cela est parfaitement logique. En effet, comme j'ai grandi en étant exposé à de différentes nationalités, cultures, langues et religions, ce n'était qu'une suite logique que j'étudie le droit dans le milieu bilingue, bijuridique et multiculturel que représentent McGill et Montréal. Je, me, je ne m'en rendais pas compte à l'époque, mais les forces de pluralisme étaient encore une fois à l'œuvre et j'étais la base de ma carrière juridique. 
j'ai eu de nombreuses professeurs exceptionnels à McGill, dont une future collègue à la Cour d'appel de l'Ontario, la juge Alison Harvison Young, un futur collègue à la Cour suprême du Canada, le juge Nicholas Kazira, le recrété Blaine Baker, Peter Benson, Jane Matthews Glenn, le juge Patrick Healy, Daniel Jutra, le regretté Roderick MacDonald, le juge Yves-Marie Morissette, Stephen Perry et David Stevens. J'ai été particulièrement privilégié de travailler avec le plus grand spécialiste du droit comparé de son temps et, je dirais même, de toutes les époques, le regretté Patrick Glenn. Ce dernier m'a apporté beaucoup sur le plan intellectuel et ce, toujours dans le style posé, dans le style posé et sans prétention qui était le sien. McGill m'a donné la chance d'apprendre des, des deux grands juristes auprès de qui j'ai travaillé comme auxiliaire juridique, le regretté juge Melvin Rothman de la Cour d'appel du Québec et le regretté juge Charles Gontier de la Cour suprême du Canada. Bien qu'étant deux personnes très différentes, ils étaient tous les deux les âmes les plus charitables qui avaient en commun la croyance dans le rôle fondamental de la magistrature au sein de toute socié société civilisée. Ils faisaient toujours preuve d'un grand respect envers les justiciables et les avocates et les av avocats qui comparaissaient devant eux. De plus, ils ont tous deux servi la population avec dévouement. Le système juridique canadien a eu beaucoup de chance de pouvoir les compter dans ses rangs, et j'ai eu pour ma part encore plus de chance de pouvoir poursuivre mon apprentissage auprès d'eux. McGill m'a aussi ouvert les portes de Yale Law School, où j'ai pu approfondir ma connaissance du droit, comp du droit comparé et du droit constitutionnel comparé en apprenant de certaines des plus grandes pensées du monde. Yale a, aussi, a, a en quelque sorte mis le monde à ma portée et m'a ouvert les yeux sur le rôle essentiel que jouent les avocates et avocates et les juges dans la mondialisation de la primauté du droit. After I was called to the Ontario Bar in 1996, my over 23 years as a lawyer was spent at Osler, Hoskin and Harcourt in Toronto, a law firm whose, whose alumni had included Justice Bertha Wilson, the first female partner of the firm, the first woman on the Court of Appeal for Ontario, and the first woman on the Supreme Court of Canada. I'm especially honored to wear the red ceremonial robe that Justice Wilson once graced. Before it was graced by her very distinguished successors, Justice Frank Iacobucci, and of course, Justice Rosalie Abella. My diverse litigation practice was encouraged by many supportive mentors, including the late J. Edgar Sexton, the late Brian Morgan, Deborah Glenn Denning, and the Honorable Edward Saunders, as well as by the Honorable Ian Binney and the Honorable Marshall Rothstein after they retired from the Supreme Court. J'ai commencé à pratiquer le droit à un moment où la profession juridique canadienne connaissait un mouvement profond d'intégration à l'échelle na nationale. La Cour suprême avait récemment autorisé l'établissement de cabinets d'avocats interprovinciaux et la Fédération des ordres professionnels de juristes s'apprêtait à conclure ces accords de li libre circulation interprovinciale, deux phénomènes qui ont grandement facilité l'exercice interprovincial de la profession. Pour bon nombre d'avocates et d'avocats partout au Canada, dont moi, l'exercice de la profession à l'échelle nationale avait vu le jour. Par conséquent, une grande partie de ma pratique s'est déroulée à l'extérieur de l'Ontario. J'ai eu la chance de plaider devant les tribunaux de sept provinces différentes, y compris les cours de première instance et d'appel du Québec, où j'ai traité des questions de droit civil québécois. Et si l'on tient, tient compte de mes activités comme conférencier appelé à discuter de divers sujets juridiques, je suis très fier, fier d'avoir travaillé dans chacune des dix provinces du Canada. La levée des barrières interprovinciales m'a permis d'apprendre des juges ainsi que des avocates et d'avocats de toutes les régions du Canada. J'en ai tiré deux conclusions. D'une part, j'ai acquis une plus grande sensibilité à la spécificité de chaque région. D'autre part, j'ai pris conscience des nombreux points qui nous unissent. Ces expériences ont renforcé ma conviction que la diversité et l'unité de 
de, de notre pays, de ses peuples et de sa profession juridique en sont des caractéristiques fondamentales et essentielles. J'avais l'habitude de dire, un peu en plaisantant, que j'étais un avocat pratiquant le droit comparé. Sans que je l'aie planifié délibérément, le pluralisme juridique, linguistique et culturel qui avait caractérisé mon vécu et ma formation est devenu un atout précieux dans ma vie professionnelle. After a long career as a lawyer, with the generous mentorship and encouragement of Chief Justice George Strathy, I was fortunate to become a judge of the Court of Appeal for Ontario. Although I had applied to be a judge because I thought I would like the work, I soon learned that there is no more meaningful way for me to contribute to the law and the pursuit of justice than through public service as a judge. Every judge in Canada knows what an extraordinary privilege and responsibility it is to be entrusted with a judicial role. Every case is consequential, even if not precedential, because it matters to the parties. So like any judge should, I try to approach each case with an open mind and a willingness to listen, both to counsel and to my colleagues. I have learned that it is always more important to listen than to speak. Being a judge of the Court of Appeal for Ontario has to be among the best law jobs in the country. The work is extraordinary, and each and every one of your colleagues is exceptional. Everyone makes better decisions by working as a team. I enjoyed sitting with each of my colleagues and always learned something new. My two years on that court were simply the best and happiest years of my professional life to date. Ce qui m'amène à la Cour suprême du Canada. J'ai été nommé à la Cour le 17 juin, le jour de mon anniversaire de mariage, ce qui fait de ma nomination la deuxième chose la plus importante qui me soit arrivée à cette date. Depuis, j'ai été accueilli avec une chaleur extraordinaire par le juge en chef Wagner et l'ensemble le, des autres juges, par les membres de la haute direction et du personnel de la Cour, ainsi que par mon adjointe exécutif judiciaire, Madame Corey Ferris, et par mon huissier audiencier, M. Pierre Rieu. Je, je leur suis profondément reconnaissant d'avoir facilité ma transition à Ottawa. Je suis particulièrement touché par la vague de soutien que ma nomination a suscité au sein de la population canadienne partout au pays, même si cela m'a parfois un peu surpris. Je sais que, pour de nombreuses personnes, ma nomination ajoute une autre forme de diversité à la Cour suprême. Je suis pleinement conscient que cette fonction s'accompagne d'une énorme responsabilité que je suis très honoré d'accepter et sachez que je travaillerai très fort pour bien m'en acquitter. I confess that I'm sometimes daunted by the scale of what lies ahead. If I begin to feel overwhelmed, however, I remind myself that the judicial role is simply to decide one case at a time based on the law and the evidence with no, large, with no larger plan or agenda. As I often do, I find comfort and reassurance in the advice of the great 18th century lexicographer, Dr. Samuel Johnson, who wrote that, the chief art of learning is to attempt but little at a time. The widest excursions of the mind are, are made by short flights frequently repeated. The most lofty fabrics of science are formed by the continued accumulation of single propositions. That is sage advice, which I intend to follow. En terminant, si vous me permettez de relier les points une dernière fois, je dois avouer que la profession juridique au Canada m'a apporté beaucoup plus que je n'aurais jamais pu l'imaginer. Elle m'a amené dans toutes les provinces de notre grand pays. Elle m'a permis de tisser certains de mes liens d'amitié les plus étroits. Et elle me donne maintenant l'occasion d'apporter une, une modeste contribution aux travaux de cette institution canadienne des plus importantes. As I embark on this challenging new journey, I hope that the judicial oath that I took on July 1st will spur me to give back to the country that welcomed my family and which has given me so many opportunities to learn and to grow. Thank you for listening to me today. Je vous remercie de votre attention aujourd'hui. 
Merci beaucoup, M. Jamal. Thank you so much, Mr. Jamal, for your uh, heartfelt remarks. And I'd, li I'd like to extend my thanks also to everyone here at the court and those watching online for sharing this special experience with us. La séance est maintenant levée. La cour reprendra ses travaux mardi matin à 9h30. Merci. Bonne fin de journée.